Hi there, I'm John from CNCRI.com and today we'll make a positive and a negative mold using MDF. When it comes to making custom molds, we've been making them actually for quite a few years. I just haven't gotten around to doing a video and photography and all that kind of stuff about them. Uh, generally the molds that we make here are actually made out of MDF and the reason for that is because they're for short runs. If you're doing a very, very long run, let's say you need to do you know, thousands and thousands or millions of imprints of something like this here, you definitely want to go with something like aluminum or metal. Uh, but in this case here, most of the stuff we do is short runs, so maybe less than 100 uh, for a customer. So as a result of that, we, make the, we use them out of MDF, and then we seal and you know, fabricate it so that it lasts roughly around 100 units. If it lasts more, great. If it lasts less, well, you know, that's, the customer knows that this is MDF and that's the purpose of it. The biggest issue with molds is repeatability. Um, they do degrade slowly over time. That's why generally you make them out of aluminum or something stronger. And the reason for going for something stronger is so that it lasts longer. They still wear out. Um, they just wear out in the thousands of units or millions of units rather than you know, 50, 50, 75, 100 units roughly. And you might be saying, well, why bother making something that won't last thousands and thousands of units? Well, there's a lot of people who make uh, products and stuff like that and they're very, very short runs. Um, they only need like 50 of something. And to go through the costs and tooling, all that kind of stuff of aluminum, which of course we can do here as well. You know, this machine's 12,000 pounds. Whether I'm doing MDF or I'm doing aluminum, it doesn't care. Um, it has no effect on the machinery or the quality. So yeah, I could do it, uh, but they don't need to go through all the expense and the time and all the other stuff that's involved with aluminum. MDF is really nice because you can also sand it and refine it. So if you have any sort of problem issues or sort of stuff like that, you just wanna just sand down or clean up a little bit. Uh, aluminum is kind of hard to do by hand, uh, but MDF, not a problem at all. Here what you see are two molds. They're the same mold, one's a positive, one's a negative. So this one here is a negative. And the reason why you want a negative mold is because you plan on filling it with something. In this case here, it will be resin. So therefore you avoid the cost of aluminum, uh, that kind of stuff. And what you do is actually just pour resin, really, really hard resin on it. And some resins can be almost as hard as metal. It's crazy how hard this stuff can get. And you pour it and once it you know, cures and stuff like that. Well, you have your mold that can last thousands of units now and at a fraction of the cost of, you know, fabricating an aluminum one. Here you have a positive one. It's kind of hard to see because I haven't cut it out yet. So what this will be, this will be cut out. You can tell this is a negative because there's a lip all the way around. So when the resin goes in there, it sort of goes straight like this. And this one here, you can see there's a bit of a lip here, but this will be cut out. Therefore, all of this is sort of popping out while this stuff here is popping down. So positive, pretty straightforward, negative, right? So for this one here, all they do is put a vacuum seal around it. And then uh, in this case is for thermoforming. And what they do is they heat up the, the plastic. They put it on vacuum, which sucks it out all the air and it forms exactly to this. Now MDF again, is not the best material sometimes for certain applications, but for this application, it's totally fine and it'll last just the amount of units that they need. There are ways to increase the longevity of, of uh, MDF molds like this here, especially when you have like those small areas and that you know, requires you know, some special pace and that kind of stuff. Now the vast majority of the jobs we do at cncr.com when it comes to making custom molds like this here, um, we can't get the material thickness that we require, therefore it requires lamination. So here you can see three sheets of MDF. Uh, they're each three quarter inch. So therefore we get this, the thickness that we need to do the positive and the negative mold that you see here. Now this is just again another test for the customer uh, to make sure that everything sort of works before we actually do the real big molds that this job will require us to do. And of course, they're still sorting out if it's better to do a positive mold or a negative mold. So that's why we're doing both on one sheet here. And with that, the customer will, will figure things out on their end, what works best. Now, when it comes to MDF, you can't get you know the thickness that you require most of the time. So that's why the lamination is there. If we're doing it out of other materials, they all have different thicknesses. So like acrylic, you could get a one inch thick acrylic. You could get, uh, you know, dye bond that's not very thick, maybe a quarter inch. Uh, every material has a different thickness, so therefore there's different 
glues and applications you need to use in order to glue the thickness that you require. And I also have a side business making custom woodworking projects at sandboxranch.com. And for that, we again do glue ups, but in that case there, it's actually solid wood uh, that I cut down to size and make the thickness required using the same machine you see here. And from there, I could actually produce the banks and other products that I make for that website. So the process is always the same. You're basically creating the thickness and the size that you need. And from there, you're machining it down to what you require this to become. Now, when I turn the light off on, on the CNC router, on the gantry, you can really start to see how smooth things are. And that's very tricky to get because there's a direct relationship between uh, the machining time and the cost of the mold. There's no way around that. So the first bit that I go on this here is a very big bit that just removes as much material as possible. Then the second bit is the very fine tuning one. And I can define that down to you know, a thousandth of an inch, but the customer doesn't want to pay for a thousandth of an inch of resolution. So therefore you got to sort of work out what's the best resolution to get to achieve the optimal goal for this customer. In this case here, it's thermal forming. So you have a little bit of give and take, so you don't need absolute amazing resolution right off the machine. They could just easily just sand it and prepare it, prepare it for their process. And it's totally fine the way it is. So what are the, the limitations when it comes to making custom molds like this? There really aren't any. Uh, the biggest issue that I come up with is the clearance because you have bits, you know, you can't have a bit that's this long. I've searched for it. Uh, you can't. So then generally you could, uh, you could do them in layers and then glue them up and it's fine because it's MDF so you could actually sand where the layers unite. Uh, the accuracy of this machine is fantastic. So that's not an issue. You can have layer after layer after layer after layer, glue them up, sand the edges and you're all fine. You have your mold. Uh, the other thing is this is a 5 by 10 table feet. So therefore you'll, your mold is limited to 5 feet by 10 feet. Um, generally, the molds that we make are roughly two to three inches tall. It's very rare we make taller ones. And the reason for that is because then you generally want to move to a five axis machine. Five axis machine, this is a three axis. So, so you have X, Y, and Z. And a five axis has something that could turn. So therefore, if something's like this tall here, the machine can actually go on the side and curve it this way, rather than me being stuck always having to go upwards this way. And of course you do inner cavities and that kind of stuff. Uh, we don't have enough volume of that to justify the cost of getting a five axis machine yet, uh, but that definitely is on my radar uh, for later on. So if you're looking for custom molds, contact me at cncara.com. We can make them for you and ship them right to your door. Whether you want MDF, you want them out of hardwood, you want them out of aluminum, we can make them.